Good afternoon, everybody, and you're very welcome, virtually, unfortunately, still to the National Concert Hall for the first in our series of spring masterclasses. And throughout the last uh, nine months, we've done our very best, although we can't gather with you in the concert hall, to present to you uh, some of Ireland's brightest and most promising young musicians being tutored by Ireland's uh, most high profile and best known educators. So we're delighted to kick off today uh, with this clarinet masterclass, and I would like to give a very warm welcome to Dr. Paul Rowe, who is going to be conducting this masterclass with three uh, up and coming players today. Uh, Paul, you're very, very welcome, and, and we're delighted to have you. Thank you. Good to be Paul, here. Paul's life is defined by curiosity and exploration and a, and a, and a vastly diverse uh, performance portfolio. He works in a huge range of areas with an eclectic mix of different activities in performance, teaching, research and leadership developmental coaching. Paul is Professor of Clarinet at the Royal Irish Academy of Music and a lecturer at the Technical University of Dublin. He also works as an executive coach for the Department of Education's Centre for School Leadership, working with school principals and management teams in a range of contexts. And Paul is project leader of the innovative collective, The Art of Collaboration. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for being with us today, and uh, we're very much looking forward to this afternoon. Before I introduce our first participant, I'd just like to um, give a little information on the structure of, of today's masterclass. So as I said earlier, we have three participants, each of whom will be having a masterclass of approximately 40 minutes. Um, at the end of the second masterclass, we'll take a, a short break just so people can stretch the legs, get a breath of fresh air, and then we'll proceed with our third and final participant. At any stage, please do feed us questions via our social media channels. So uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or our Facebook page, uh, we will gladly relay messages and questions to Paul during the masterclass. And we will have a Q&A session after the third and final participant. Um, so please do keep those questions coming at any point and we will collate them and bring them to Paul at the end. As I said, we have uh, three performers with us today. And the first I'd like to int introduce is Jacob Brantz. And Jacob is a 14 year old uh, Royal Irish Academy of Music Young Scholar, and he's been playing clarinet for five years, and he studies the instrument at the Royal Irish Academy with teacher John Finucane. Jacob is really enthusiastic about the clarinet, he loves the instrument, and he takes every opportunity to improve his playing skills. So Jacob, you're very, very welcome today, and we hope that you get a lot out of the session. And uh, we hope that uh, those watching also enjoy uh, Paul's uh, feedback and, and, and information. So, Paul and Jacob, I'm going to leave it to you now for the next little while, and um, I'll tune back in uh, towards the end of the masterclass. In the meantime, enjoy the session. Thank you. Thank you. So, welcome, and thanks to Nigel, and thanks to National Concert Hall for the invitation to uh, share with you today uh, some music, and thanks to the students from the Royal Irish Academy of Music to you, Dublin, Cork School of Music. Um, and so we're all in our individual spaces. And just to make this a little bit more personal and to form a bit more of a connection, just to say a little bit about where I'm coming from today. I'm in Drumcondra and I'm really enjoying this spring weather as I look out at the blue sky. So that's giving me a real sense of hope. Um, and it's lovely to see that we're moving towards the light. So a couple of things. We're getting so used to working in this virtual environment and it's a challenge to us, but it is possible to create some sense of community. And in a way that's kind of an energetic, an energetic thing. So if I could really encourage all of the people listening today to be as mindfully present as you can be, maybe you've got a lot of distractions going on around you, but as much as you can do, really try and be present to the music that's unfolding, even if that's just for a couple of minutes. Imagine you were here at the National Concert Hall, you know, and uh, sitting in listening to this class. I'd really encourage you to, uh, to try and do that. As Nigel said, we'll have three students, 40 minutes, another 40 minutes, a little break, and then uh, 40 minutes, and then finally 30 minute uh, questions. So let's be curious together. 
let's listen together. And in that intention, provide a little bit of a space for our musicians to play together today. Let me just share with you before we do, before we listen to Jacob, I'd just like to share my screen with you. And I want you to perhaps imagine you're here. This is at the National Concert Hall, the, the Kevin Barry Room. It's a lovely space. So just have a little look at this for a moment. It's a beautiful space. So if you happen to be lucky enough to visit a concert hall in the next few months or next year, uh, it's a very nice space here. So this is the Kevin Barry Room, which was completely uh, refurbished. Okay, so let's begin the class. And before we start, um, Jacob, just want to thank you for playing today. And thank you indeed for going first, uh, which is um, you're paving the way. As you're playing today, I really want you to listen to yourself. Because really, as musicians, that's the most important thing we can do, is to listen. And listen is, is really an incredibly important skill. We don't want to just hear ourselves, we want to listen to ourselves. So let me ask you a question. You're going to play Finzi, the first movement of his five bagatelles. Is there anything in particular that you would like for me to listen out for? Anything in particular? Probably to not play the notes smoothly. Okay, so you want, to watch, you want me to watch out for how smooth are you playing the notes? Okay, anything else? And maybe how sharp. Okay. How sharp is the sound or? How sharp my tonguing is. Okay, so you're curious about your tonguing and uh, so we'll listen out for that. And is there any particular place in the music that we need to really uh, give attention to? No, I think it's really the whole piece. Okay, so what we'll do, if it's okay, I'd love for you to play this whole movement. It's a prelude. We're starting today, so it seems highly appropriate to start with a prelude. And um, just to say to the people listening, this is um, Gerald Finzi's From Five Bagatelles, the first prelude called, first uh, of the Bagatelles called Prelude. Gerald Finzi was a fantastic um, English composer, perhaps not as well known as he could be, has written a beautiful clarinet concerto also. And this uh, piece is played quite a lot by students. So... Please, uh, Jacob.
great. Thank you. Beautiful. So I'm immediately struck by how much character you play with. And uh, you've really captured the atmosphere of this piece so well. At the beginning, it says Allegro de Cecil. What does this mean? It's Allegro, so it's not too fast. And what does de Cecil mean? Decisive. I would think so. Do you think you were decisive? I tried to be. I think you were. You sounded decisive to me. Perhaps a little bit, perhaps a little rushed mm -hmm. in your decisiveness. Perhaps a little, but very nice. Really nice playing there. And then in the middle, you had a completely different atmosphere. How would you describe the atmosphere of the music in the, in the middle of the piece? I thought you captured it beautifully. It's more slow and thoughtful. Ah, nice way of doing it. Nice way of um, ex explaining it. It's slow, more slow and it's more thoughtful. So it's important that we really take the time to understand what it is we're wanting to say with the music. Music isn't just notes. Sure it isn't. It's, 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 it's a lot more than just notes. And then, of course, we come back to the same, the same material as we had at the beginning, but just in a different key. So, okay. So the things you spoke about as wanting to... to speak a little bit about or explore a bit further was the tonguing. So how was the tonguing for you? I think it was fine at the beginning. Yeah. But towards the end, the very last bit, it was a bit sharp. Okay. So why don't you just pick out the spot that you think, mm, I'm not so sure about that and play that for me. And let's see what we can do with that. Okay. So where shall we go from? The Alargando at the end. Yeah. That looks like it's a good place. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so really what we're looking at there is that second last bar, isn't it? Yeah. So how about we play this second last bar? Play the note, da, di, ta, ti, ta. Almost heroic, super slow, and a beautiful, long, long uh, note. Let's play this the second last bar, very long pitches. And can you make sure you, you're definitely still tonguing them? So we're still. And very lyrical, very, very lyrical. Yeah. Second last part. So what might be interesting is for you to listen again and listen super, super carefully and to find out, find out what um, note in particular you're not happy with. There are some specific notes. So let's try this. I think it could be the highest one. I'm not. Ah, so let's play it and let's just simply observe what's happening. I want you to really sharp, not sharply observe, but really focus on what you're hearing and what you're feeling. So let's play this again, very slow, very granular. Yeah. Okay. So. So let's play it a little bit faster. Keeping that same sort of singing lyrical tone, okay? And um, keep your tongue very close to the reed all the time. Actually, let's do that again. And as you play, keep your tongue super close to the reed all of the time. Let's try this. I know I'm supposed to put on my original sound, so, okay, there we go. Um, so notice the little grunts between the notes, yeah? Yeah, 
Now you're not doing it to that extent, but can you really exaggerate having those grunts in the sound? So we can really see how is this happening. So I want you to, to exaggerate what you're not happy with to begin with, to play slow. Okay, so now let's play a series of uh, a series of A's. Just brushing the tip of your tongue on the reed. Just brushing, brushing. Da, da, da. And again, please. So what is it you're discovering? Uh, I should be more gentle with it. Uh -huh. So keep on discovering what's there to be discovered just by experiencing what's happening with your tongue on the tip of the reed. Some of the notes are really beautiful and some have this little grunt. See, can you notice what's happening? And see, can you just adjust your air, just the position ever so slightly to, to, to bring about this clearer tone. So now play Bs, repeated, repeated Bs. Okay, good. Do you, do you notice some notes are great and some are not so great? Yeah. So do you notice what's happening on the great ones and what's not happening on the not so great ones? The great ones closer. Okay, so let's do more of that and see does that work. So let's play now D, the high D, which is the most difficult. Yeah you, yeah, you seem to really make some discoveries here. You seem to really sort it out. There was one or two. So let's now let's play this series of notes. Do, 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 do. Keeping the tongue close to the tip of the reed and blowing, 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 blowing all of the time and keeping the throat open, okay? Let's try it slow. Yeah, a little, it's, it's a bit better, don't you think? Yeah. So this is granular work that takes a little bit of time to, to, uh, to develop. But so what I recommend with this is lots of very slow playing, lots of really getting a sense of what exactly am I doing with my tongue? How light am I, and how light am I on the reed and how close to the front of the reed am I doing it? So let's just play this passage. Play it legato, please. Just as bar play legato. Great, now play it, play it, and uh, just change the phrasing a little bit. Let's try that. Yeah, and again, play stronger, really use a lot of air. Yeah, so I think when you come to playing this uh, passage, what sometimes happens with students is they they do beautifully on. Let me just turn on the percent. Then they can go into this tightening up and tightening the throat. You understand? So I think when you're playing these tongued passages, if you can think legato, keep your throat open and keep the air moving, okay? So let's just play from, let's play from Alleganda to the end. And when you get to that second last bar, think of keeping your tongue very light and using a lot of air, okay? Let's try that. <laughs> Great, and I love the speed of your trill. I'd love to be able to trill that fast, which is great. Uh, and push right through to the end. 
So really super energetic and exciting. Can you just do from the last uh, the last three bars, please? But crescendo right through to your thrill and busy and happy and joyful. And I try not to do a gap between the da 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 go straight in there, please. Okay, let's do this again. Last one. Da pa pa. One, two, three, four, pipa. Okay, so one, two, three, four, pipa. Okay, just just actually just count is one, two, three, four, five, six. Say that please. One, two, three, four, five, six. But say it in tempo, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, try again. Count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and more abandoned, more free. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, go right through to the end. Let's do this, please. Count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. Play the last bar. Play it like that. Great. Okay. So let's just go back to the beginning now. And let's just talk. Let's, let's play from the beginning once again. Let me ask you a question. What would you like your listeners to feel when you're playing this open? What would you like them to feel? Kind of a steady beat. Um, you want to have a steady beat, but what do you want your audience to feel, your listeners? What would you like them to feel? Kind of a grand opening. A grand opening. Okay. Um, so how would you, how does it feel for you to feel like this is a grand opening? What is it you might do in your own body and your own energy to provide this sense of a grand opening? Can you just imagine what that might feel like? Mm -hmm. Can you take a moment? Okay. So let's play the, the beginning as a grand opening. So really great way to start off in a journey. Here we go. <laughs> Very nice. And I love the way you do that little bit of a, a rallentando at the end of that section there. So um, so let's do this once again. And what about these notes in, in this first bar? Let's just experiment with different lengths. OK, so if we do it short, it's... Can you play that? Short, 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 short. Yeah, we definitely don't want that. Sure we don't? Okay. Now do the now do the complete opposite. Very sustained. Let's try that. And again, please. Okay, so what do you think of that one we've done just there? That quite sustained one. How does that feel to you? Oh. Yeah, I think it's got this bold character and it's kind of noble. So can we try from the beginning like this, but also try and keep the pulse very steady. Yeah, ba 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 da 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 da. Could you just um, click your beat? Click your beat that you want to play this piece at and feel it in your body, the, the, the beat that you're going to play at. Keep it really steady. Okay, so let's try this grand opening, bold, long notes and powerful. Cool, great, 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 great. So what did you notice that time when you were playing in terms of your body? What did you feel? More open. Yeah. So, and I even noticed you're becoming more engaged with the music. So remember, music making is not an intellectual endeavor. It is, we use our intellect, but it really is about our music is movement. Sound is movement. So if you can really have a sense of being, allowing yourself to be moved by the music. So allow yourself to be moved by the music and intuitively just uh, 
tune into how you're being moved by the music because if you're being moved by the music you're likely to move your audience as well okay so one more time we'll go we'll go from the beginning and uh yeah let's go from the beginning once more and let you play a bit longer <laughs> Okay, so let's just look at this section before, say, one. And we've we've got these kind of crescendos and decrescendos, so it's more swirling now. At the beginning it was more bold, but now we've got this swirling effect. and lots of shape to the music. To, there's an arch to each of one of these phrases. So let's go from bar before one, please. <laughs> So can you can you can you go over that one more time? And I would even crescendo even up ba 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 ba. As wind players, uh, sometimes we can underdo our dynamics, and I think it's really helpful for us to listen to string players, uh, cellists, who really when they have a crescendo, they really go for it. We can be a little bit um, reserved, and I think especially when we're practicing, we really need to exaggerate our dynamics a little bit more because remember we want to we want to express the music and uh, not just keep it in so just make this a little bit more dramatic crescendos and decrescendos so it's more of a swirl to the music okay so bobby for one again <laughs> Okay, so so um, Jacob, make a little bit more of that bar after two. So it's a, it's it's quite a, how would you say playful? You get the idea. So it's quite playful. So again, we don't want to just gloss over. Then it becomes very vanilla, so we need more. We need a bit more flavor there. So upbeat to two, and after three, after two, we really make it a um, nice crisp articulation. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, beautiful, Jacob, beautiful decrescendo on that high C sharp, really nice. And you're leading us into this next next section which you played so beautifully so tell us about this next section in terms of what it is what is the character of the music that you want to convey here what sort of words would you use to for the music that you want to play at four and peaceful harmony 
Slower. Yep. Yeah. Kind of, kind of more open. More open. Peaceful, slower, open. So just take a moment to just listen to yourself. What does peaceful mean to you? More open. And earlier you said, uh, what was the word you used in the word earlier when we, I asked you this question? Peaceful, slower, thoughtful. Yeah. Thoughtful. Yeah. So what I, if we want to convey that effect, then we have to feel it ourselves. Because if we don't feel it, there's no chance our audience is going to feel it. So just bring awareness to that feeling of thoughtfulness, slower, and so forth. Let's play from four. very nice you have such a beautiful sound on that high a flat so sweet so uh, warm and round so this uh, um, section at four can we make this a little bit more f flowing and take a little bit of time with those funny fingerings I know it's a bit strange there I'm just, let me just play a little bit of this shape this melody as well yeah shall we try this before Yeah. Why don't we just take a take a moment to figure out what you're going to do with your fingerings there? What What are you going to do? Yeah, I think that's the way to go, isn't it? Will we yeah. give that a go. Let we go over that again. So you can take a bit more time. Yeah, take your time. It will help your fingering also. Thoughtful. Ah, so remember you gotta so should just rehearse this movement. Isn't that the one? Yeah. Actually just do it with your fingers. Just do it with your fingers without the clarinet. Just do it. Ah, no, again. Do it with your fingers only. Leave it, leave your clarinet. Do your fingers only like this. Da, 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 da. Sorry for my terrible singing. Again. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And also now rehearse it in your mind. Now play it. Because by rehearsing it in your mind, it's almost the same as practicing it anyway. So rehearse it, rehearse it doing it perfectly in your mind and now play. Now, okay, so then what way are we going to finger the last note in the bar? The same as the first? The, no, I think we need to do middle finger, don't we? How will we get to the, how will we get to the D flat if we do this? So it has to be, so have a look here for a moment. It's going to be middle finger, hasn't it? Okay, play this bar super slow, very slow, this bar. Yes, yes. It feels strange, I know. I know it feels strange. But um, yeah, try that and see if you like it. Keep doing it. If you don't like it, try and smooth out the other fingering of it. Okay, so let's go from four and we'll continue.
So, so Jacob, just a couple of um, points of dynamic shaping. So from five, we've got a nice crescendo there and hold on to that singing tone at E flat and really sing through the sound. And then after that, after four, after one, two, three, four, five, after five, there's a nice crescendo, but stay on that mezzo forte there so that you get a contrast with the next bar, which is pianissimo. But what I'd really love to do, because you have such a beautiful sound, I'd love to hear you singing more on that sound that you have. For example, <laughs> Can you play this? This is a three after three after five. Really big singing tone. Blow right through the instrument with a lot of air. Oh, 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 oh. that's so much better. Yeah? And remember on the clarinet, there's certain notes we need to give more energy to. So our F, our G, our A flat. If we don't, they're, they're, a bit, they're a bit thin. So we can end up being a bit lopsided. We can end up... So we have to compensate. Let's try that, please. Carry on. Strong. Contrast. Okay, so let's just go back a little bit here. And again, we're coming back to the tonguing thing. So uh, what syllable do you think of when, you, when you're tonguing, Jacob? Do you have a syllable in mind that you use? Uh, Duh. Okay, so let me suggest do, do, do. So for example, this phrase, this is before we come back to tempo one. It's do, it's do, 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 do. So those two bars are do, 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 do. If we use do, we have less friction with the tongue. If we go da, it's more percussive. So just, if you don't mind, just trying rehearsing that, vocalizing it. Do, 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 do. Can you rehearse that, please? Just vocalizing. And again, please, so try to do it without any sense of, I know it's a little bit, you might be a little bit self-conscious too, without any hesitation. Do, 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 do. Try that. Do, 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 do. And without, without accenting any of the notes, do, 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 do. No accent. Do, 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 do. Now play it exactly like that. Play that, please. Ah, so what I heard was do, 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 do,
Did you notice that on the quavers? So can you keep your quavers? Do, 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 do. Can you say it again, please? Vocalize it. Vocalize. Again, please. Do, 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 do. Yeah. And try that, please. Now, what do you think? This is better, no? It's not ta ta ta. It's not so heavy with the tongue. It's not ta ta ta. It's not the tonguing syllable. It's not da. It's do 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 do. Okay, so let's do that again, and then we'll continue. We're moving along here. Great. So what, what is it you're discovering from the work we've been doing? Any particular discoveries or, or thoughts you're having? To put more feeling into the music. Okay. And how do you do that? By mm, the notes and kind of more air. Okay. So that's the technical side of it, but also something about getting that experience into your own body. And what about this tonguing thing? What do you make of that? That's really helpful. Yeah, so do, 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 yeah? So with that in mind, let's just go through the last couple of lines. I know we've only got a couple of minutes and see, can we make some progress on it? And just to say something about the way we practice, this is very important to say. We can do a lot of practice without playing the clarinet. We can do a lot of practice with our fingers by just using our fingers, but not actually putting them on the clarinet. We can do a lot of practice by using a tongue like this. And it's the same as practicing, but it gives us an opportunity to be very detailed and specific about the movement involved. For example, in um, Indian classical music, they verbalize all of their rhythms before they play them. They're called tal, I think. I'm not so sure, certain about that, you know? And they say all the words and then they play it. And there's a very good reason for that. This music is 3,000 years old. So it's the same with ourselves. Do, 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 do. So let's just do this last section. Let's do this last section. So we have the first bar and a half. Oh, put on that. Just sound. Here we go. <laughs> So that's do, 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 do. Can you say that, please? Vocalize it first. A strong and a lot of air. Especially with the curves. Don't go do, 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 do. Try that again, please. Do, 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 do. Yeah, better. Now play this, please, and play very loudly, but light with the tongue. Loud air, but light with the tongue. Ah, much better, huh? We don't have such, such uh. now this next bit is quite tricky. We have Can we play that super slow. I think we've only got one minute left. Okay. Very slow. Okay, now can you, let's try, do, 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 let's go, do, 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 
Those six notes, please, to beginning on the D. Yeah? Vocalize it. Go on. Good. Go on. Now play that and play it slow and notice the tongue movement is very, very light. Okay, let's try this. Ah, Beautiful. Keep going. Do, do, do. Very good. Good, 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 good. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for playing today. A beautiful sound, uh, beautiful shaping of the music. Keep up the great work. Really looking forward to hearing you into the future as well. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacob, and thank you, Paul. Uh, always fascinating from this end to get an insight into, into the playing and into the music, so thank you for that. Uh, just to remind folks that we will have uh, one more participant, and that's Sylvie, and I'll introduce Sylvie in, in just a minute. And then we will take a very, very short break, just about three minute break. But please, if you do have questions for Paul on, on the music or any aspect of the instrument, don't hesitate to put them in our in our chat um, facilities on, on our social media channels and we will collate and uh, relay them to Paul at the end of the masterclass. Uh, so moving on, our second participant is Sylvie Plant and Sylvie is a fifth year student in Kinsale Community School and she studies music at the Cork School of Music. She plays both piano and clarinet and is currently studying grade eight in both. She will be playing the third movement of Malcolm Arnold's clarinet sonatina. So Sylvie, you are very, very welcome. And uh, we hope you really enjoy the session this afternoon. And uh, Paul, I will leave uh, you and Sylvie to get on with it and we will see you uh, just before the break in about 40 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome Sylvie. Thank you. Lovely to, to have you here to play for us today. Um, so, Rather than just launching in, um, just to maybe let's hear you speak a little bit about this piece. I mean, what is it you know about Malcolm Arnold? Or do you know anything about him at all? Um, I actually don't, don't know, know too, much too much about him. About him. Okay. But, um, like I did, I did the first, first movement, movement a few months ago, and I liked the whole overall feel and the energy in it and everything. Yeah. I think they're really nice, action like. It's 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 a it's a really it's a really fun piece, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And have you played? Have you played the whole of this sonatina? Um, not the second movement, but I did the first one. Okay. Like a year ago or something like that. Ah, uh -huh. okay, okay. Did you know that Malcolm Arnold lived in Ireland at one point in his life? Did he? I didn't know. He that did. One. He did. As far as I'm aware, I think he lived in Wicklow. Right? He's passed away some time ago, and he wrote a lot of music for brass and for wind instruments. Really fun music, and he's written a couple of clarinet concertos as well. And he has a fantasy for clarinet. Have you ever come across that? No, never. It's a solo piece, and uh, the theme is quite like the Dances of Galante by Kodai. So, um, but he he's a really fun fun composer. Yeah. And this piece is played a lot by clarinet players. So I'm really looking forward to what you're making of this piece. So before you start, is there anything in particular that you would like for me to give particular attention to? Um, probably like the musicality and like just the quality of the tone and everything. So the quality of the tone and the musicality. Yeah, yeah. And tell your audience, what is the word at the beginning of the music say? Furioso. And what does this mean? Like furiously? I think so. <laughs> do you know how to do you know how to do furious? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good to hear. So I'm looking forward to you playing furiously. If you're okay, I'd love for you to play through this whole movement. It only takes about two minutes, I think. So let, let's let's have a go with this. <laughs> Uh -huh. 
Great, 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 great. Well done. Well done. Thank you. So, <laughs> turn off, turn on. I'm not never sure what it is. Anyway, how was that for you, Sylvie? Um, I Happy? Think it's kind of, wasn't really breathing properly, so I'm nearly out of breath. Okay. But, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I should have been a bit more careful with that. Ah, okay. So it take, but you know something, it takes a lot of energy, this piece. <laughs> so it wouldn't be much point in us playing it, preserving our energy. It's not really furious. So yeah. we do have to kind of have that kind of almost manic energy. And, you know, we have to uh, demonstrate this atmosphere in our bodies, in the way that we express ourselves. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to be furious like this. That's kind of, to me, that's more passive aggressive. <laughs> I like my I like my aggression straight up. Okay, um, so you will feel a certain amount of tiredness uh, when you when you when you're playing this. So I wouldn't worry about that that so much. Okay, so we spoke about musicality. Yeah, this is what we wanted. We want to look a little bit at musicality. Okay, great. So what does that mean? Let's look at this first page and let's play it more musically. Actually, do you know what? Let's play from the beginning as far as letter C. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to say to you, so you want to play this more, music more musical. What is it we need to do? What does it mean to be musical? Can you play it from the beginning as far as letter C, please? Sorry, the sound cut off. Is it just, just the beginning, beginning to C? To the beginning as far as letter C. Okay. Perfect. okay. Okay, so was this musical? Uh, not especially, I would say. I think it was pretty musical. So let's just let's describe what would make it, what would make it more musical. So, um, I feel like I over the, the whole, whole piece, piece, I know I that's know what you mean, mean, but I need to like. like more contrast and dynamic. Ah, that's exactly what I mean. That's exact. You hit the nail on the head. You see, you, <laughs> you, you're in my head. So it needs more dynamics. Yeah. I mean, he, Malcolm, is being quite sparing with his dynamics, and he does say fortissimo molto marcato. But if we do that, then it begins to sound a bit relentless. Now maybe that's what he had in mind, but I think. We want a little bit more variety, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think uh, we can explore options for that, right? So we have a statement at the beginning, which is like a trumpet statement. It's like a fanfare, yeah? Can you play this, please? Just the first three notes. Okay, can you play the legato and super fortissimo, but play legato? Fantastic. And again, please. Super legato. Okay. Now, can you, can you, uh, can you do this, but use your tongue in a lighter way? You might have heard me talking to Jacob about do, 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 not da, 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 not da, 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 but do, do, do. So can you say that, please? Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Ah, so now let's play like this. Make the notes, those notes longer. Do, do, do. Ba, ba, ba. And again, please. Same thing. Do, do, do. Light with the tongue. Better. Super good. Okay, and play, play louder. Use a, to play louder, you simply use more air. You don't use your tongue heavier. Keep your tongue light, but use more air. Okay. Then we have a different little figure. 
kind of playful that bit, isn't it? So can you play that playfully, the, that next motif? Could we be a little bit tidier? Very nice. So can we just make sure our triplets are wa da da dum da 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 dum one two three one one two three one. Can you say this please? One two three one one two three one. One two three one one two three one. Now play that please. Let's do the first one. Let's do the first one. Again, please. And the next one. Again. So put that together. Great. Now let's put those two ideas together. So we have ba ba ba, ba da ba da ba da 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 da, ba ba ba, ba da ba da ba da ba ba ba. So it's almost like those first three notes are like a fanfare of the trumpet. Each time you play, ba ba ba, and then back off a little bit. Let's try that from the beginning. Keep going. Bravo. What do you think about this? The new version. What we've just done. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, More musical? Different? Yeah. yeah. Happier with it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. take a moment to see what's, what's different now than what we did before. Kind of like, like emphasizing that uh, the three notes, notes going on, on. like the way it keeps coming back and kind of ah. shows that. Ah, so that creates a sort of thematic aspect to the piece. Yeah. And our ear can kind of tune into that. And then we have a more pl playful aspect. Okay, let's do two more bars and then we'll go on. So the two bars before A, we have. Can you play this bar? It's slow. I notice the first note is accented and the fourth note, not the rest. There we go. So bring out your E and bring out your A. Let's play it slower. The fastest way to do anything in music is to play slowly. Much better. Again, do it a few times. Now up to speed. Let not to speed. Pia pa pa pia pa pa. Yeah, better, better. Now let's look at the scale before letter A. Now, what we know about this as clarinet players, we know the first part of the scale is going to come out strong. So I'll just play that. That's easy to play strong. Can you play those first two beats? Again? and play stronger and faster. Okay, now we have. So we really need to compensate for these lower notes and we need to play really with lots of air to balance out. So play the last, the last part of that scale. Great, right to the end. No. Strong all the way through, yeah? And we'll now play the whole of that bar. Great. Super. Can you play the faster? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Let's put in, in place a few little posts to secure that a bit more because it won't just be like the bit sort of untidy. So how about 
Let's do this practice. It's called beat to beat. Go to this, go to the, each beat. First one. And then. Keep it strong, keep it strong, bit a little down, bit a little um, strong. Now, play the whole of the scale. A little bit more emphasis on the first of each group before, but a little, 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 little. Great, just make sure the last three notes don't disappear. At the moment I'm hearing <laughs> last three notes is like <laughs> no, straight to the end. Strong, 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 strong. Great. When you play strong like that, what do you feel inside of yourself? Um I don't know. Like I can feel the music like vibrating more. Ah, great. So if you're feeling the music vibrating more, what do you think your audience will feel? Like the energy? Yeah. So if you want to convey energy, you've got to feel energy. You cannot convey energy in the music if you're kind of... No, your audience just won't feel that. So you've got to feel very energetic. But in this piece, it's like, it's a funny thing. We've got to be very energetic and furious, but controlled fury. So we have ba ba ba, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, ba -da. I told you before, ba -da -dum, ba -da. and here we go again, ba ba ba, ba -da -ba, -da -ba, -ba, -da -ba, -ba. and then we come to the next one, ba -ba 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 -ba, spiky, yeah, yeah. So it's got variation. So it's not just, which is just a bit too, and nobody's going to listen to you when you're furious like that. But if you're furious and you're a bit sort of manipulative or something. <laughs> you can, you know, I told you before, and then, and then, yeah, you get, yeah. You get more attention. Okay, try from the beginning, your fury, but the control fury, bringing out this trumpet call, bring out the variation in the motif, accents, and then strong on your scale on the way down. There's a lot to think of. Don't think so, better not think, just play. Bravo. Okay, let's carry on, please. Please. Okay, stop, because we know what's coming, don't we? Yeah. It's the same again, huh? So let's look at those four, those few bars between A and B, and let's just play with it. played with the notes yeah i just want to get a different feeling of it i didn't play exactly what's on the page or anything like it so can you play those notes but make a story out of it don't worry about playing the right rhythm i just want you to kind of feel it feel the intervals feel the grace notes feel the accents just get a feeling of the flavor of this music from letter a or just the second half of a yeah, yeah. What do you think? It's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever do that when you practice? No, no. Okay, so when you practice, what you want to do is you want to chop and change. You want to continually try things in different ways. Play it at half the speed.
can you play this? Very jazzy or klezmery or something. Yeah, just just exaggerate and even even do something with your embouchure. Just have fun. Just smile and play. Just very slow and just play, mess around. Okay. Okay, now try 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 this. Super fast. Now play this. Okay, so what happens when we do this? Um, so like you see it kind of like a different perspective. Ah, beautifully put. You see it like a different perspective. Yeah, yeah, why not? It's like a painter. You know, he doesn't always paint with the same colors in the same house. He tries different things. So our brains get bored very quickly. So we need to constantly present our brains with new information. Otherwise, it kind of goes, oh, I know this again. Oh, yeah, that's how that goes. Yeah, yeah, just do it. And it just defaults into kind of a kind of okayness. But we don't want okay. We want something kind of much more quirky and fun. So I think this section is really quirky and fun. Let me just play a little bit of this, hopefully quirky. So I'm really bringing out that playful, quirky side to the accent now. Give it a go, will you? We don't, can we do keep keep everything that you've just done, but play it very slow, but with the same kind of slightly drunk character? Slow, yeah, but but do, do, keep all of what you did, but play it slower. Yeah. Cool. So let's go back to the beginning and play as far as let us see. And I hopefully that'll be the end of playing ba 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 because it gets a little bit tired. We, we get the message. Okay. So from the beginning, let us see. And I want you to bring out the quirkiness of this music, the fun, the playfulness, through the accent, through the, through the syncopation, the grace note, all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Very well done. Very well done with the, that, la, that last scale there. You really kept the sound going right to the end. So what do you think of that so far in terms of musicality? Is yeah, it, I feel like it feels it very different. I don't know if it sounds different, but it like, yeah, like I feel like it feels a bit more. Okay. More so know. you feel, you feel different. That matters. So if you're an actor, and you're going to play a character, you've got to get into the role, haven't you? Yeah. You don't just rock up and read the script. You have to play the character. Yeah. And so you say it feels different now. And because it feels different, it sounds different. And your audience will hear it differently. So yeah. uh, continue to check in with yourself about how this feels. What is it I'm trying to convey here? You know? Okay, yeah. let's go on a little bit. Let me just pick out another section. Hmm. So as we know, there's quite a bit of repetition with this piece. So I think what we should do is, well done with that high A actually, by the way. Um, yeah, let's just go from, I know that maybe it's a bit, un, maybe it's a bit, um, Anyway, you're grand, you'll be fine. Five, four before F, where we get up to that high A. And let's do a little bit of work on those next, this next section from four before F. Okay. 
Will I keep, sorry, will I keep going? Or? You know what, maybe we'll just, we'll just stop for one moment and we'll just, we'll just talk about a, a practice technique, right? So we've got a lot of scales there, haven't we? We've got, let me play the easy one because when you're a teacher, what you need to do is you need to always demonstrate a lot of the easy passages and definitely don't demonstrate the hard passages unless, unless you turn, especially when you're on, on live Facebook or live concert hall. <laughs> unless you, well, I don't mind making, I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, I'm going to do the easy one. I may attempt to do the, the high one, but I may not. So let's just play that F sharp scale coming down. First of all, we'll start with that. So from three after F. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so just just play it again, and then I want you. So so before you play it again, listen to what you're playing. It seems a bit of an obvious thing to say, but anyway, there's a difference between hearing and listening. I want you to listen carefully to what you're playing. Three bars before after F. Okay, and then stop and tell me what you've heard. Okay, stop. Tell me what you've heard. What did you hear? Describe what you've heard. Um, it wasn't like perfectly in time. Like it could have been a bit more like controlled. Beautiful. I like it. Could you be a bit more specific? Um, Where exactly could it have been more controlled? Kind of around the break, maybe. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Cool. What else? Uh. Possibly the same as the last time to kind of like keep up the volume to the end. Great, I like that. Yeah. So how will we do this? More air and mm. emphasizing the first speech. Let's just and try that. And maybe if we played it slow, do you think that would work? Yeah. What does that when we play slow, what does that do for us? You have more like time to get it under your fingers. Yeah, and we've got more time for our brains to absorb the information. Yeah. You know, our minds are very quick, but our bodies take a little bit more time to get the message. In fact, what's happening really when we're learning a piece of music, we're wanting to, it, it, we're using the prefrontal cortex a lot, but we're wanting it to go back eventually toward the, the back of the head. And, and repetition helps us with that, but it's not just repetition. It's, it's repetition of doing things in, a, in the correct way. Yeah. yeah. So let's do this slowly with the ideas that you've proposed there. Okay, now I want you to stop and I want you to give me a verdict on that. What was your verdict on that? Slightly better. It was better, wasn't it? What was better? More control. There was more control. What did you do to create more control? Took it slower. You took it slow and you also emphasized the first to beat four. Yeah. yeah? So remember we used this technique. How about this technique? We'll try that. So that's called beat to beat. And do a little bit more of a gap between each repetition. Apparently, now I don't do this, but to really get the optimum space between each repetition is apparently five seconds. So that would be like. But I'm afraid I'm just too impatient. I probably would have played it five times by then. But <laughs> so they say in neuroscience. But <laughs> so should we try to try a little bit more space between your repetitions? It does make a difference, doesn't it? If we have a bit of bit more space, it just yeah. gives us a little bit more time for us. Can you do it again faster? Bit little um, bit little um, bit little um. That's really great. Now, how about, let's play. Now, now. From the B. Again. And 
can you watch me for a moment? I'm going to go for this E with great intention. I know where our A, I know where I'm going. I'm in no doubt where I'm going, am I? I'm not going. No, no, I know from the beginning. I want to get to A. Can you do this, please, with great intensity? From the beat. I love it. Great. Can you see the difference? You really, it's like you're throwing a dart. Yeah. Treble 20. Okay, so now go from the F sharp all the way down the scale and really aim for the A. Okay. I love it. I love it. Okay. A um, couple more things. I know the time is moving on here. So let's just have a look at this F piece. And then I swear we'll come on to the high scale. I'm just a bit nervous. I'm working up my energy to, to try that high A scale thing. Okay. So F is. I tell you what, just for fun, just emphasize your E's. Now, he didn't write that, but just try it for a bit of fun. <laughs> Emphasize the E's, put accents on them. Oh, I, I think I like that. Can you do that faster and keep the accents? Okay, well, how about if we emphasize the A's? Just emphasize the A's now. Again, please. Cool. Now, don't think about what you're doing. Just play with amazing funkiness. <laughs> Again, please. Send again. That was funky. So can we go from F to G, please, and play super funky on those dot 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 like it like a computer game, and then like skating down the ice or something. Off we go. F, please. <laughs> Great. Okay, let's jump to this high A piece. So we have, we go. That's right. I'm only doing that to get a bit of practice. Okay, so um, so we go right to the top of the mountain and then we come sliding down. So let's go to the top of the mountain. Can you go up as far as high A? I'm climbing this mountain. Really aim for the A. Great, okay, okay. So instead of going dot, 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 Go do, 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 do. So you're digging in the snow. Do, do, do. Not, da, da, not hitting something, but digging snow, maybe. Like, not, not, not too. Sorry, I hope this isn't sound term. <laughs> anyway. Okay, we're just having fun. So do, 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 do. These quavers, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so go slow as you get up to the top, because sometimes we have to slow down a little bit as we get to the top of the mountain. So that's okay, let's do that now. Okay, super good, and then... Let's do those five notes. Let's practice those. So do it slow. Dee -da, dee -da, da. Can you sing those notes? With the clarinet? Or... No, sing. D. Maybe an octave far. Great. Sing again, please. Da, 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 da. 
Now play, please. Can you play slow? And we listen to the tuning. Yeah, again, and make them as beautifully in tune as possible. Can you sing slowly? I play slowly and play every note in tune. And I'm not going to say anything about fingerings. Your ears should do it in your own bush. Yeah, just play and play in tune. <laughs> Easy peasy, huh? Easy peasy. And again, please, same thing. I'm not going to say anything about fingering. Yes, fingering matters. Don't get me wrong. Fingering does matter, but our ears matter a lot as well. And we can do a lot with our ears, even with strange fingering. So I don't want to mess around with your fingerings too much. So let's do it again. Da -da -de Slow. Let's do it. Da -de -de -de. Faster. Let's do F sharp, E, D, ya, da, dum, D, three blind mice. So your F sharp very strong, ya, and your E very strong. They're not strong enough. Again. Again. Faster. Three blind mice. Faster. You three blind mice. Yeah. Again. Now play with the high A, A, G. Yeah, here we go. You see, this tuning is much better and we didn't change the fingerings. Did we change the fingerings? No. No, so we just did it by listening. Let's listen, let's sing those those notes again and then play and see are they, are they in tune. Sing. Da, 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 da. Now play those notes and listen to the tuning. Not bad, your first note is a bit sharp, but okay, you know, we could tweak it, but it's not bad, you know. Okay, let's have a go at this passage from uh, the, the bottom of the mountain and then right the way through to G. Let's do this, please. <laughs> Yeah, let's do this again and use a lot of air. Just use a lot of air and really go for it. Okay, and use your body. Use your body. <sighs> okay, as if you were pushing a sledge up a mountain. You need to be physical about this. If you try and hold in the energy, there's not enough energy can get out, out, yeah. out, out. So use more energy, please. Off you go. <laughs> Cool. Great. Okay, so we need to continue working on those semi quavers and that's yeah. slow and detailed. You won't do it in one session. It takes time for things to get embedded in. Okay, so let's just do. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's go from. I've got a backward. Is that J? Oh, it is a J. So let's just. Let's go from H to the end, please. H to the end. Very soft, very soft. Go.
Suvi. Thank you so much for playing today. How do you feel? Good. Yeah, I feel like that made a big difference. Uh huh. Okay. So, um, yeah, take your time. Look at the details. Try to vary your practice. Yeah. Pull things apart a little bit. Play them half speed. Play them full speed. Play them at the third beat, then the second beat, then the first beat. The more you you chop and change your, how you practice things, the more your brain has to work a little bit harder. And when your brain is working harder, you're learning more. If it's, yeah. if it's too easy for your brain, your brain just gets turned, turned off and gets bored. So you need to constantly change things yeah. up. Um, but great. So musicality, did we, how did we get on with our musicality? Uh, good. Yeah, I think getting more like contrast in it kind of helps a lot. Ah, ah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for playing. I believe we're going to have a little break now. So Nigel will come in. Thanks, thank Nigel. Thanks, Sylvie. Thank you. Hi, folks. Thank you very much, Sylvie. Lovely playing. And thank you again, Paul, for all of your, your insights. As you mentioned, Paul, we are going to take a very short break now. We'll be gone for just about three minutes. So if you are out there uh, watching on YouTube or our Facebook play page, please do come back uh, for our third and final participant. And also don't forget our Q&A, please. So if you have any questions that you would like us to relay to Paul, uh, please do so via our social media comment sections. And we will do so probably a little bit after 4.30 at this point, uh, probably closer towards 4.40, 4.45. So as uh, as mentioned, we're going to take a very quick break and we will back be back with you very shortly. Thank you very much.
Hello and welcome back, Paul. And uh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we will be joined by Jinjin. Just now. hello, Jinjin. How are you? Hello. Good. Uh, you're very welcome. And uh, so uh, this is our third and final session uh, to be followed directly afterwards by our Q and A. So do keep those questions coming in. Uh, Jinjin Zhu, you're very welcome to the masterclass uh, this afternoon. Uh, Jinjin has been playing the clarinet for eight years and uh, his teacher is Antonio Cafola and he studies in TU Dublin uh, Conservatory of Music. Jinjin, you're very, very welcome and we hope you enjoy the session. Paul, I will leave you uh, together now and we will see you, um, we will see you at the end of this, of, of this session. Thank you. Great. Welcome, Jinjin. Hello. Would you mind doing me a favor and pronouncing your, your name, your name name? Oh, I, my name is uh, Yu Can you say that again, please? Yu Great. Cool. Yeah, I, just yeah. want to, I just want to hear the sound of it. Um, sometimes I think these, these names from different parts of the world have such a poetry and magic about them that we when we when we abbreviate them to something that helps us as uh, to understand them in the English speaking world we lose something so I'm glad to hear your name pronounced by yourself um so you're going to play Brahms and what a wonderful piece yeah. it is w what is it that you know about this piece do you know anything about this sonata uh, it's written by Brahms okay from the romantic era and he's German I think Okay. Do you know anything else about what he what he what he composed for the clarinet or anything else about him? Um, no, not really. I've like I've heard some music from Brahms, but like not names in particular. Okay, so you're absolutely right. It's it's romantic music, uh, and he wrote two sonatas. So this is the second of his two sonatas, and he wrote them at the very end of his life. Um, and so they're considered mature Brahms chamber music. And some of some of the best chamber music that's been written for the clarinet are these two sonatas, and they are extraordinarily uh, rich music. Um, they were written for clarinets, it's called Richard or Richard Mulfeldt, who originally was a violinist, actually. So uh, do you play other instruments too? Uh, no, not anymore. Not anymore, okay. So let's have a go at this piece. What, what, what does it mean when he says Allegro Appassionato? What does this mean? Any ideas? Uh, like gracefully, briskly. Okay, so Allegro means lively, huh? Lively. Yeah. And what about Appassionato? What does that mean? Passionately. Hold on a second, I'm looking at the wrong... Oh, it's so stupid. Excuse my apologies. Should I put on the right thing here? <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Allegro Amabile. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. I'm looking at the first sonata. I have them two of them on the one in the one uh, copy. So Allegro Amabile. So it's it's lively, but it's not a passion. It's not a passion. It's a little bit different to the first sonata, which starts really if it is a passionato feeling this passionate thing aspect. So okay, let's have, let's have a play of this and see how we get on. We probably won't yeah. play through the whole sonata. We may play through a reasonable section of it and okay. then is there anything in particular you want me to to be aware of or notice uh like the semi quavers in particular okay you want me to notice what about them what should i watch out for like maybe the sound and fingering maybe so maybe the sound and the fingering in the semi quaver passages okay anything else we should really be aware of uh maybe dynamics Maybe dynamics. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So looking at our dynamics, our semi quavers, and yeah. Okay. Let's have a go of this, please. Okay. Brown second sonata, first movement. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, 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 Ginger. Thank you. Some really nice fluent playing there. And uh, I think you're doing a really good job on those semi quavers. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think they're pretty good, you know. Yes, we could we could improve them and that sort of thing. But let's, let's see what we've got going on here. So if, I don't know, do you like Netflix? Yeah. Okay, me too. If this was the theme music for a Netflix program, what might the program be? What sort of a movie or adventure or a series might it be? Like a more maybe calm? Maybe calm, okay. So what would be a storyline in this? Would it be the countryside? Would it be the city? Yeah, what would it conjure up? What images does it conjure up as you think about this music and you think about it as a as a film or, or a TV program? Maybe nature uh -huh. during Sorry? springtime. Uh -huh. in, in springtime, nature. Yeah. So how do we? How might we bring that into our clarinet playing? Let's just have a look at that, and just at the opening, have a sense of this sort of. Nature, springtime, and maybe there's growth, there's that sort of feeling of possibility. Let's just play a little bit at the beginning again. So, yeah, yeah. And think of nature and see, maybe it makes no difference, maybe it'll make absolutely no difference, but I'm just curious. <laughs> Can you just stop for a moment? So it's changed. I don't know what you've done, but it's changed in a good way. I don't mean your sound. I just mean everything has changed. Can you say what has changed? Uh, like the mood. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. How did you do that? I'm really curious on how you changed the mood now. What did you just do? Well, it's hard, it's hard to explain. It's yeah. more like... Yeah, it is hard to explain, but I'm curious as to what, how, what your explanation might be. It's, it's more like how I look at this piece a bit ah, differently. Wow. Okay. So let's do this. Let's look at this piece differently. And as you're looking at this piece, be curious about it. Imagine you've never played this piece before. Imagine you're just kind of discovering things about the music and you go, Wow, that's kind of interesting. So in other words, you don't want it to appear like this is an exercise that you've played a hundred times before. Oh my God, is it getting any better? Am I do I need to practice this? No. Let's start again as if we're, this is the theme music for your own personal movie about spring and be imaginative with colors, with shapes, whatever. So let's just play even the first, say, 15 bars, 14, 15 bars with that mood, as you said, mood, absolutely right. Okay. Take your time to, so before you do, take your time to get into that space. It might take you a moment to be in that space, waterfall or whatever it is. Just feel it on the inside. And whenever you're ready, don't start on you're ready. The music will, no, the music will know when you're ready and you'll know when the music is ready for you. Lovely. So what do you make? What do you think? What are you discovering? Uh, yeah, it's like, don't look at the notes in particular, but with more the feeling. Wow, cool. So I'd love to see you doing more movement, Jinjin. How would you feel about just expressing the music more through your body? Don't feel as though you have to just, sometimes clarinetists, and they come for their lesson, they kind of, it's almost like they put on their clarinet uniform. They just take yeah. off their thing and then they put on the clarinet uniform and they go like this. And it's, it stays like this for most of the lesson. And then they finish and then they move their arms and do stuff. And it's like, where were those arms during the lesson? You see, when we're expressing, we're using our arms, we're gesturing. And music is gesture and movement and sound. And so it's not just sound. We just sit there and play sound. 
Maybe it's nice, I don't know, a little bit bland, but this is a waltz, you know, not a waltz, but it's got this flow to it. So we want to tell a story. Now, my story was a little bit exaggerated at that time, but it doesn't mean to say I would play it like that. But I want yeah. to explore the emotion. So please move a lot and experience what it's experience what it's like to feel music from the inside. OK. Let's look at this this famous bar, this famous bar. How do we get this so smooth? So let's just take a moment. See, can we smoothen out this semicolon? <laughs> oh, oh, let me turn off the original. Turn on the original then. Turn on there. Can you do just play with this bar a bit for a moment? Play with the bar, just chop it up, change it round. Yeah. Again, play this a few times. And let's try this. Stop the rhythm. Check your note. Again, please. And see, can you do it with a diminuendo? yeah so like i spoke to sylvia about we need to we there is no point in practicing this like this it just it's a bit of a waste of time because as i said your brain you played it four times your brain knows what you're going to do next so it just turns off so you have to chop and change it a bit so the really the challenge in that bar, I would say, is your B flat D C. Can you play these three notes? B flat D C. So play B flat, just B flat, and listen to it and feel it in your body. Okay, now play D, but uh, before you play, just imagine where it is pre before you play it here in your in your body, not just in your in your head, in your body. Oh, oh, oh. Play D. Can you play it a few times that D? Back to B flat and notice where your tongue is inside of your mouth. When you play B flat, notice where your tongue is. Play B flat. See where your tongue is. Just notice, play B flat and notice your tongue, especially the middle part of your tongue. Now, play D and notice what happens to your tongue. To play D, what happens? Play D. 
But to play D, to play D, what do you have to do with your tongue? Uh, like, like the, 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 the back of it is a bit higher. You have to raise your tongue a little bit, don't you? you yeah. Can you sing those two notes? Do, de, sing the two do, notes. De. And notice what your tongue is doing when you're singing. Do it with you sing and notice what your tongue is doing. Do, de. And again. Do, de. Do, de, da, 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 da. Can you sing those three notes, please? Da, 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 beautiful and again da, 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 and you've got a beautiful quality to your voice now play those three notes in the clarinet with the same quality as you sang there play it smoothly slurred make sure you you, you don't tongue the D. Da. It sounds to me like a da da. Oh. So let's play, let's sing it on R. Oh. Oh. Sing R. Oh. Oh. Can you go, so can you go smoother? Oh. No. Oh. You can even slide if you like. Oh. Slide between the notes. Oh, slide. Oh. Now play it, please. Can you just go from B flat to D? Da, smooth. B flat D. Yeah, it sounds like there's a gap between those two notes. So, yeah. Uh, Please don't tongue your D. Play it smooth, slurred. No, no, I hear you, you, you stopping it. So can you play the D back to B flat? D, B flat. Yeah, again. B flat, D, four. Getting there, getting there again, do it about 55 more times. Yeah, oh, three notes, please. And again, really sweet and singing. Yeah, now you put your tongue in. Yeah. Make no tongue. Ah, no, no tongue. See, see the tongue is. The tongue has got into the habit of it, and yeah. it takes a while to to get rid of the habit. So to do so, get it, play slower. Da, see, there's no tongue in that. It's not da da da. It's da da. Sing it again, please. Sing it again. Again. Now play, play, please. Play. Okay, again, play and okay, so something to work on taking the tongue out of it. Now let's play that whole bar, please. You can take your time at the end of this phrase. There is no rush. Again, dolce. One more time. D, bit, bit faster at the beginning. B, ba 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 Beautiful. Okay, so we just do a little bit more at the beginning and then we'll go on. So the thing with this piece is there is a lot there in the piece that's not marked, but is implied. As I said to you before, Brahms didn't write in every single gesture. I have a new edition of, it's not that new, but it's a, an edition of this work. It's Urtext by Baron Reiter. And there are lots and lots of pages of performance notes going through every single bar of this piece by musicologists. It's very interesting. But it, to sum it up in a sense is that Brahms would wrote it for, um, as I said to Muller, Mühlfeld, 
who would have who was a violinist who played with vibrato and he played with a lot of expression somehow clarinetists have got into the habit of playing this piece quite bland and a little bit dull it has a lot of ups and downs in it and also um he he would have been influenced by the muffled sound so he would have when muffled played it it would have been it would never have been he would it would never have been played like this and no reason why we if, how, if we could be influenced by the way viola players play this um okay so let's try from the beginning with a lot of expression a lot of physical movement yourself allow your body to move where the music wants it to move maybe yeah let's take this please Piano, so yes. softly, softly for it. Oh, dear, mysterious. Carry on. Shape it. Now we're coming on to a whole other section. Of, uh, what is this about? Now that our movie has moved on to another scene, what's happening with this next situation? What's going on? Uh, this is like more fuller, bigger, compared yeah. to the Quiet Stars. Yeah, this is fuller, bigger. What might be happening in our Netflix thing? We had spring. Now what has happened in this scenario? This probably be like a big waterfall. A big waterfall so we've come up so we're having a walk in the countryside it's beautiful sunny day we're enjoying the fact that the, the flowers are growing and now whoa waterfall okay let's hear the waterfall please I don't think I'm going to ever be able to listen to this this section again without thinking of waterfall because I think uh -huh. you've just come across the perfect word for what it is because that second bar is like a waterfall for sure. <laughs> Can you play that second bar more waterfall-ish? It's kind of a technical word. <laughs> Yeah, let's look at the semicurves. Just play that second, second thing. Let's play. Now let's play the triplets. First triplet. Beautiful. And the next triplet. Big triplet. Wonderful. That B flat on the clarinet is the weakest note and it's so wimpy. So we have to give it so much energy. So it's so funny. You see, if I play C, my C is like this. But if I play B flat with that same air, it comes out like this. So in order to play the B flat at the same volume of the C, I have to go. So the C is. The B flat is so there's a very significant increase in air. Can you just do that C to B flat, big increase in air on the B flat. You see? Exactly. And then the A, the same thing. Now 
Make your B flat and your A louder than your C. Big, round, full sound. Play, the, play those two beats and then play the first two beats directly afterwards. Uh, yeah, it's a bit strange. <laughs> two backwards, just beats three and four followed by one and two. Oh, okay. Now put it in the right order. Ah, that's great. Now the first bar, let's put all that together. Big waterfall and that, uh, that's a wave in the waterfall, isn't it? That second bar. Let me just check in with you. How how is that? What do you think of it now, Ginger, in that section? Uh, it's like arriving like towards maybe a lake. Maybe a lake. Ah, okay. So are you liking this now? Is this to your liking? Yeah. yeah. Huh? Okay. And the next section says S V, which means Soto Voce. And really what Brahms means is suppressed. So there's a kind of suppressed feeling. So it's a different mood. The exhilaration of the waterfall and now we're going on to something a bit more suppressed a bit more you know let's play this next section gentle <laughs> is beginning to change here. Beautiful. What was that about? This is like maybe like some creature underwater, so it's suppressed mm. under the lake. And then it's... And then it, it jumps out of the water or something. Swirls, swirling, yeah. So yeah. let's hear that last few bars. <laughs> so really exuberant. Let's try this last section. <laughs> Now off you go. Next bit. Back into the waterfall. Oh, okay. That sounds so good now. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, it's improved a lot. It's it sounds so good. So what did we do? How do we do this? Uh, maybe more feelings. More, and more thought was put into this. Ah, more feelings and thoughts. Ah, okay. What were we doing before at this? Uh, like playing just the dynamics and the notes. Ah, so more thought and feelings. So the feelings are in the body, aren't they? Yeah. And they're in our imagination. As we conjure up images and pictures, we feel stuff. We might even begin to hear stuff and smell stuff and taste stuff and yeah. So yeah. let's play from the beginning and bring all that feeling, mood, and just make it up. 
this is your piece. Okay, Brahms wrote some of these notes, but really it's your version of this piece. Let's hear your version of this piece. It's gonna be like nobody else's. Here we are. This to me sounds like a very interesting exploration. I want to see this movie. We have five minutes left, maybe four. What would you like to do with the last four minutes? We can continue working on this piece a little bit more. We could listen to some of your Malcolm Arnold. I think you said you had Malcolm Arnold as well, did you? What yeah. You, what, what would you like to do? A little bit maybe more? Maybe work on this a bit more. Okay, let's work on this a bit more. Imagine you're a violinist. And try and use, if you want to use vibrato, why not? It doesn't mean to say you have to use it in it, but if you're a violinist, maybe you would go. Oh, let me turn off this. Turn on the original sound. There we go. Okay. <laughs> With apologies to my violin friends, but you get the idea. It's got this kind of yeah, this passionate feeling for viola, even, huh? Okay, let's try this. <laughs> Again and, and keep the tempo good. Yes, really. Yeah, again. Sort out that bar 42, it's slowing down a little bit. So let's see, can we keep the tempo? Two, three, four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three and a four e and a one. Let's just make sure we keep that moving. So let's do the last four semicolons. Let's just try, let's try that. The last four notes. Yeah, like a big flourish. Let the clarinet go. Yes. So allow yourself to be moved by the music. A bit faster. Yes. 
Ah, so you can let the clarinet go. Okay, now let's do the bar, the, the notes we're going. Just play with that for a bit. Playful, play, the, play that first four notes about three or four times, and then finish with the with the last group of notes. Beautiful. Ah, how much fun is that? So we have. Can you do this, please? Bar forty-two. So, so do the two bars beforehand and go right oh, okay. through, right through. Great, Ginger. That was such a lot of fun. So I, I suppose what I'd really like to convey there is that sometimes when we're working with music, we work hard. We think, oh, my God, we have to work on this passage so hard. And we think of it as really hard. It's not yeah. hard. It's just fun. Just play. The more playful we can make a practice, the more easy it becomes. Sometimes we try too hard. Anyway, thank you so much. I really thank enjoyed you. working with you. And the very best of luck with your leaving side. I think you're going to do yeah. great. I don't know whether you're going to have it in person or how does I, I, I'm not up to speed with the news. Yeah. But anyway, the very best of luck with you with your studies. And um, thank you so much for playing. And maybe you'll have a question when we come back on. So when they finish it, yes. Yeah. So yeah, we're just finishing up now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jinjin. Well done. And thank you, Paul, uh, again, for all of your uh, comments and insights. So if I could just ask um, our other participants if they'd like to switch on their uh, cameras and audio again, please. And we will have a, a short Q&A session, which we always start off with questions from our participants. Um, so perhaps in the order that you played, um, Jacob, do you have a, a question uh, for Paul that you'd like to ask? Yeah. What do you normally do 10 to 15 minutes before a performance? Oh my God, what a great question. <whistles> Jacob, that is such a good question. So today in a way was kind of a performance, yeah? Yeah. And psychologically, if I can use that word, I was preparing for this. I was I was up this morning at half six. I, do, I like to walk, I like to do meditation. I like to walk then. And then on my walk, I was thinking about this. And I was mentally preparing for this. I was kind of thinking, where are these people? What are they going to do? What do they want? And how might I support them in their learning? So I was doing mental preparation at that time. And it was kind of kind of casual. Then I had a shower and it kind of drifted in and out of my head. But every time I thought about it, I thought, yeah, what is it I want to do? What's my intention here? So I was very clear about my intention. And then 15 minutes before, I'd begun to get a bit more nervous. My heartbeat began, began to be get more elevated. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm quite happy about that because I need to feel a little bit of excitement. And so I felt a little bit of nervousness. I started walking around. I was quiet. I was kind of internally focusing. And then I was ready to go. So personally, before a performance, I like to gather myself a little bit mentally, mentally prepare maybe days in advance, depending on what it is. And then as I get closer to 15 minutes beforehand, I like to have a bit of peace. I don't want to be looking at a phone. I don't want to be distracted by anything. I just want to just be calm and maybe just imagine how I want to begin. If it's a performance, I might just think about that very first interval. How exactly do I want that to feel, to sound? And I try to, it's a funny word, visualize, but it's not just visualize. I try and 
hear the sound I want to make. I want to feel the feeling I want to have. And uh, yeah, the atmosphere. So sometimes what I'll do with a piece is I'll write two words on the p- beginning of the piece. Uh, what at the beginning of the piece, to give the atmosphere of the piece. Maybe like with Jin Jin's piece, like spring and joy or something. So I try not to think technical. When I'm performing, there is a need, to, sorry for the long answer. The interesting thing is when we're practicing, we usually practice in left hemisphere mode, which is very detailed, very rational, very organized. But when we perform, we have to let go of that kind of way of thinking. We have to move to the right side of our brains, our right hemispheres, which is much more color-based and non-linear. Anyway, that's kind of technical answer. I don't know whether that helps you. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, Sylvie, have you a question for Paul? Uh, yeah, I was just curious if you played any other instruments and when you started and how long you can play. Sorry, that's just yeah. if you play other instruments. Mm, so so, so, so the, to start with the last question first, I've been playing a very long time. I'm 58, so I've been playing 50 years. So I hope I'm getting the knack of it at this stage. <laughs> um, I started when I was a kid at about seven or eight years of age. I didn't get any proper lessons till I was about 15, but I was playing all every day from about seven or eight. So I kind of grew up with a clarinet in my hand. Um, and do I play other instruments? I play a bass clarinet quite a lot. I, I play an E-flat clarinet. I play C clarinet. And more recent, I've played a lot of contemporary music. So more about the music I play rather than the instruments I play, as I play a lot of bass clarinet. Uh, now I'm very interested in folk music, and so I want to do more of that. I like playing traditional music, and I like folk music, and I still play contemporary music, so I get to annoy people that way for another another while yet. But I do play tunes now, which is I'm enjoying too. Does yeah. I don't know whether that your question. Go ahead. Thank you, Paul. And um, Jinjin, a question for Paul? Yeah. Uh, how did you become interested in like the clarinet rather than the other instruments? Yeah, that's a really great question. Uh, it was not at all selected. So I arrived there down at the band at seven years of age, and I was saying, you're playing the clarinet. I didn't get a lot of choice, I was told. And it was funny because I started playing on the E-flat clarinet, you know, the little E-flat clarinet. Yeah. And we were sharing with two of the boys. So I got my turn, and I wasn't as tough as those guys, so I didn't get to play it very much. They kept grabbing it off me and... Then they'd play, and then I get a little blow, and then the reed would be broken. Then it's a you broke the reed, so you have to get the reed. So I always had to get the reed, and they played the, the clarinet. So I started at seven. I was given it the clarinet when uh, in, the, in the band, and um, but I think I made an amazingly good choice. I really think the clarinet is the best of instruments. It really is the best of instruments. So if you had a choice, would you would you choose the clarinet or? Another instrument. Mm, well, my I suppose maybe my if I were to be honest about it, my favorite instrument is probably the piano. Mainly because I think the repertoire is so amazing. All of the great composers, great musicians have played piano, and it's so it's such a complete instrument of itself. That said, the organ is kind of cool as well. As well. I, last week I listened to Pasicali and Fugue, and you got to be pretty you probably got to be pretty good on your feet to play that piece, you know, in the organ. You've got feet and hands and everything going, so I'm pretty impressed with that. But piano is my favorite instrument, I would say. Thank you, Paul. Now, we, we have a, a few questions that have come in during the masterclass. So uh, Barbara asks, hi, Paul, absolutely loved the deconstruction of Finzi. The tonguing tips were super and will be passed on. Question, I noticed you were putting down some left hand fingers for the throat G sharp. Is ah, it true mm. or tonal purposes? Mm, that's a really good question and a very technical question. And maybe just open it up to non clarinets. That's it. Does any of them on the on the call. Um, of course, we, G is just playing. G sharp. A. Uh, the original sound is probably better. Turn on original sound. A. From people. But as most clarinetists know, we always use extra fingerings down to make the sound better. Now, for me, I have what I think are beautiful sounding extra fingerings, but they're a little bit awkward. So for my G sharp, I really like this one. Three, uh, the third finger on top and the first and the bottom, as opposed to, it's got a depth and a, and a substance to it. 
for my A, I like to play. Now, of course, I will vary them depending on the tuning and depending who I'm playing with. But and then for the A, I play two, three, two, three in this key. Fuller and B flat same. And I do practice this. I quite speed. I can play it at quite a lot, quite fast speed. I played in Brahms and everything. I play all those resonance fingers just because I've practiced them so much over the years, and uh, so that's what I do. That it's not it's not so much tuning as more timbral. Although you're absolutely right, in a tuning situation, it may be inappropriate to have that maybe. You know, it's a little bit flatter, as you can hear, so I do play around with it. But I would I would recommend students practice their scales slowly using these resonance fingerings. Now, grade seven, eight, and so forth, you know, not younger students. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a little bit of a marinette. This is called What is meant? Experiment. Say that again, please, Nigel. I just turned off. I think I should be able to hear it now, yeah? Say again, please. For the benefit of non-clarinetists, can you explain what is meant by the term throat notes? Oh, yeah, good question again. Throat notes. So um, throat notes and the clarinet are these notes here, which actually you might say they're in the throat of the instrument in terms of the physicality of where they're at, this A pitch, this G sharp and this G pitch. And why they become an issue is because they've only got a short amount of the tube being, being uh, played, they can be quite fuzzy. A, and G sharp, and G sharp. So they're quite fuzzy notes, and we have to compensate by playing stronger. So they're also they go across the, the register of the instrument. So we have the low register, and the middle register. And between those two registers, you have your throat notes. So that's why we have to be careful. We say to composers, be careful about doing tremolos across the break, like a G sharp to a B. <laughs> it's going to be a bit tricky, you know? So we, we tend not to love those tremolos. Uh, so they're the throat notes, uh, then going across the low register and the middle register. Thank you. Um, and we have a question from Bob. Uh, best way to improve your upper register tone and do read mouthpiece choices make a big difference? Yes, yes, and yes. Best way to improve your upper register tone. Okay, so like any of these things, there's a degree of complexity to it. Uh, let me start with the equipment piece at the end of things. Uh, your mouthpiece, you read, your ligature all make a big difference. So um, I have wonderful mouthpiece and a great ligature, and I use I use uh, leger reeds. I use these plastic reeds, uh, which a lot of players use now. And um, so having the right mouthpiece reeds it does make a big difference. I could talk about it for an hour. Uh, maybe I'll say Van Doren B40 is the biggest selling mouthpiece in the world. And there's a reason for that. So I don't, I, is it, I think, yeah, mine is, I think, B40 Lyre or something. Um, so the B40 BD5 is a very good, very good standard clarinet map piece. You can spend a lot of money on them too. Um, the higher register to improve, mainly the problem with the higher register, people bite too much. And that's a fundamental problem of the embouchure. They bite. They bite from top to bottom, which means they compress the reed and they create stridency. And it is a misnomer in how we should shape our mouth. When we want to shape our mouth to make our ambush, we need to drop the jaw. This is the shape, drop the jaw. There should be no top to bottom, not no, but reduce top to bottom pressure. Pressure should be at the side. So it should be like this. This is the shape. So when I'm teaching students, I say to them, this is what I want you to practice all the time. Do it in school. People think you're crazy. It doesn't matter. You're practicing your embouchure. And you have a lot of space inside your mouth. When you go into your high notes, if you bite, and we squeeze the reed, we tighten down. It, so we need to drop off the pressure. No pressure in the lower lip. More supported. The sides all the way around the lip. And strong. But it, so it, takes, it takes a while. So no biting. 
So if you're finding chunks out of your mouthpiece on the tip, maybe you need to back off a little bit. And you back off by dropping the jaw, bringing the lips together. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we, we do have another question regarding throat notes. You may have sort of answered this previously. What are the best ways to improve tuning in the throat notes? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a specific thing. So tuning the tuning in the throat notes is very important because, of course, it's very important. But there are lots of options as to how to tune. The, sorry, Nigel, I jumped across you. Was there something else with this question? No, no, there, no. That, that was the question. Yeah. Okay. What I often see is clarinet is pulling out the the barrel at the at the, at the there, and that, that's okay as a tuning idea. But you have to be really careful that. When you pull out here, it's going to affect your throat notes much more than the other notes because of proximity to the barrel. So be careful about in terms of your tuning of those notes. What we demonstrated with Sylvia demonstrated it so brilliantly is tuning can be improved a lot simply by listening. People spend fixate a lot about fingerings, tune instruments, mouthpieces. Yes, it's important, don't get me wrong, but you can do a lot by listening. Use your tuning machine as well. And um, get to know the feeling of, of uh, the right interval as well. So for those throat notes, what I would do is perhaps get your metronome and set a drone. Or if you really want to try something, go on YouTube, get a cello drone, put it on G, and you play B flat and then play B and then play A. And you see how the intervals feel. So there's a feeling thing involved. It's not just a technical do something with your fingers. You have to develop your ear. Play softly as well. Play loud. What does that do to your tuning? So it's a sensitivity issue, actually. It's, you know, so I'm not sure if that helps, but what I'd say you want to improve your tuning, listen carefully, use your tuning machine, uh, sing, sing for sure. Sing, absolutely. Your ears can hear what it is you're trying to produce, like Sylvie demonstrated so well. So we, what, with Sylvie, what I did was I didn't go straight in, let's change fingerings. Yes, she had a G-sh finger and that was too sharp. But rather than do that, I thought, no, let's work with this. I mean, you, you listen to tra traditional musicians who play these, these flutes. They play marvelously in tune. How do they do this? They, they use their ears. They've got, they're brilliant musicians and they half own. They do all sorts of things. They don't get 10 more keys so they can play the F in tune. Thank you very much. Um, we're we're very nearly out of time, but we do have a couple a couple more questions. Which sure, I'm not in any hurry. So feel free to be brief, Paul. But um, uh, a question again from uh, I guess a football fan because it comes in from LFC Kings of Europe. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about read management? How often should you change your read, and how should you and how should you store reads in between practice sessions? Okay. Okay. Good questions. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I think we need to not fixate on getting the perfect read, just as in life isn't perfect. So we need to be able to play in reads that are not perfect. Often the problem we have with reads is because our amateur are biting too much, going back to that issue again. So we need more flexibility. That said, obvious things like cleaning the read off after every every time you practice and put it back in the thing. Personally, and I don't want to be I don't want to be flogging this, but I love the leger for that reason. I don't do any messing with them. I don't I don't clip them. I don't sand them. I just play them. Now I do know what grade I play, uh, three and three point seven five. European code, and I just, it works really well for me on this. Now, I have to say, I'm a ledger artist, but I'm not trying to flog them. But I would say they're certainly worth looking at. They can be expensive, but uh, whereas the other is you're playing with them, people would say, well, you don't get the same sound on Kane as on, on ledger. That's rubbish. Uh, Ricardo Morales, who's an amazing clarinet player, he plays ledger. The guy who did the inauguration, I uh, know not the guy who did the inauguration, but very principal of Philadelphia and that. So, hey, he plays ledger as do many of the top players now. It, it was a myth that you can't get the same sound. That's, no, not in my opinion. Others will, others will disagree. Okay, thank you. And maybe we have time for just a final question. This is from, and excuse my pronunciation, Jesus Ion Onifade. And uh, he asks, what best technique can you suggest for fast tonguing, especially for the, for the last movement of Mozart's clarinet concerto? Yeah, do you know what? There's a really good book, and, I, and I'd like to share this with you. 
And I'd like to acknowledge his, his fantastic uh, pedagogue, uh, American pedagogue, Larry Guy. This is a really, really good book for developing your tongue. But do know it takes time. Uh, you know, it does take time for you to develop. You can't just practice. Well, I'm playing that most of next week. I practice for two weeks. I'm tonguing. No, 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 no. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. It's a bit like preparing for a marathon or something. You've got to practice for a period of time. But this book is really great. I think the tongue, well, apart from anything else, you need to know what you're doing. A lot of clarinet players simply do not know what they're attempting to do when they're tonguing. They, they, the understanding the mechanics is very helpful. And we did a bit of it in our session. And I, when I'm teaching, I try not to get too technical, if I can explain it in a little a less technical way. So I, sp I talked about do, 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 do. Great, fantastic method. You don't have to explain why, less friction between the, the tongue and the, and the reed, et cetera. Keep the, but that book is good if you want to, and uh, allow time and lots of air and keep the tongue to the front of the mouth all the time. Very, very light. Um, my teacher, former teacher of mine, Jim Daly, uh, who's, anyway, Jim Daly, who's a wonderful man, he went to Michele Incenzo, this famous Italian clarinetist who was principal clarinet in the NS, the RT Symphony Orchestra in the 60s. And Jim used to say to me, oh, Michele used to always just do this. I never knew what the hell that was about. But in the last couple of years, now I have it. So now I'm doing the same with my students. Why? Because it's a visual, it's a very clear indication of how you want the tongue to move without explaining the mechanics. So your embouchure, during your lessons, during, during watching Netflix, and then tongue like this. Okay, pictures, pictures, sound, images, ideas, not just uh, left brain stuff, which is fall this ball, right off a little bit. No, our brain likes to strive. Thank you. Paul, on that note, uh, I'd just like to thank you very much again for- Great pleasure, enjoyed it immensely. Such a wonderful masterclass this afternoon. It's been a pleasure to see you and uh, a pleasure to have you uh, working with working with our students. And uh, I would also like to, to thank Jacob, Sylvie and Jinjin for being part of today's masterclass. Well done. And I have no doubt that we'll be hearing much of your playing in the future. No uh, doubt. I'd like to just uh, remind people that uh, we will have the second in our masterclass series this day next week, same time on Thursday, and that's with a uh, double bassist or a stone who will be uh, again working with three um, emerging double bass players. Uh, and that promises to be uh, an interesting afternoon as well. Paul, thank you very much Thanks again for joining us. And uh, we do hope to see you very soon again for sure. if not in the concert hall in this virtual world until we can welcome you back into the building, hopefully before too much longer. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Nigel. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.